speak about divine visitation. Some divine visitation. I can't hear you. Some divine visitation. Uh, when we are talking about divine visitation, uh, I believe that to each and everyone we know, we understand that when God purposes to visit you, something happens in your life. When God purposes to visit, there are things that move in your life. When God visits everything about you, changes to better and promises, and past promises and prophecies are turned to reality. There are people who have received prophecies concerning their lives. They have a glimpse of what the future look like, looks like. But one thing is that it is not taking place. Things are delayed. You have prayed, you have done what and what, but things are not working. But I have come to declare to you that this is your moment of divine visitation. Because when God comes your way, when God purposes to visit you, your story changes forever. I am saying when God visits you, when he comes your way, everything changes for good. Every divine visitation always results in supernatural manifestation. There is no way you will have divine visitation on a natural manifestation. It is supernatural. God manifests supernaturally upon you. There is a supernatural manifestation that takes place in your life. When God steps into any difficult situation in your life, his, his mighty acts, signs and wants as are inevitable. Look around and you see any person that God has divinely visited. Any person that has encountered God in a divine way. There is a manifestation of God's power in the life of this person. And when there is a presence of the power of God in your life, I guarantee you, your life will change. There is a turnaround that takes place in your life. Hallelujah. Amen. The best thing that can happen to anyone is for the Almighty God to visit that person. Life can never be the same after divine visitation. Right now, as you are talking, we are praying that God may visit us in a divine way. And I have, no, you've been praying for it. God, see me. God, I need your attention. God, visit me. You, the visitation that you've been longing for, the visitation that you have desired for so long, is coming upon you in the name of Jesus. Amen. Hello? The supernatural. The positive and glorious changes we need in our lives. There are people who are longing for positive changes in their families. There are people who are longing for positive changes in the nation. That will surely come when God visits them. Divine visitation is not meant to be a one-time experience, but a continuous experience all through our lives. Some of us have encountered God at some point, and that was a turning point for your life, and you have continued to experience things in your life you have, like you have never seen. God has come upon you. He has spoken to you. He has brought forth assurance over your life. And things have... And what we are seeing miracles happening. Wonders happening. The favor of God is upon you. Things are moving in your life. And that God is going to do in the name of Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. When God decides to visit a person, he can visit a person either directly or indirectly. When you're talking about directly, is that God appearing directly to a person or God touching the person directly. Example, we can see in the Bible when God visited Saul. Saul was later on Paul. He encountered God directly and that was a turning point for the life of this man. He no longer, be, he no longer lived as Saul as a persecutor, but Paul, a man who impacted many generations. Even right now, we are still experiencing what happened the impact that Paul did through the word after the encounter, divine encounter with the Lord. Things do happen. Look at where we have read. This is a story of a man that we know. The, about the story of Samson, the conception of Samson. The parents, the Bible says that the parents walikuwa, yani mzazi alikuwa nitasa, hakuwa anaza. God manifested upon them. There was a divine visitation by the angel of the Lord. Let me tell you something. 
When you read your Bible, be keen because there are things that you might not understand. There is a lot of experiences you have seen in the Bible where the angel visited the people. And the Bible has said that the angel of the Lord. When you look at that scripture very well, it is saying angel, capital, and then the other letters in small. But when it comes to the Lord, there are of two types. There is a place where Lord is written in capital letters, and there is a place where Lord is written with small letters beginning with a capital letter. There is a big difference with the meaning of the two statements or the words. Where there is a capital letter, the angel of the Lord in capital letters, it shows that the Lord himself manifested in the form of an angel. He appeared himself, and those that saw him, they saw him as an angel. And that's why it is described as the angel of the Lord. Lakini maaji nandika L do N capital na manena ingine ni small letters. It means that it's just an ordinary angel that was sent, commanded to deliver a message or was acting, acting on assignment. Now, here, where we have read, the Bible says, now there was a certain man from Zora of the family of the Danites whose name was Manoah and his wife was barren and had no children. And the angel of the Lord. Do you see the difference? So look at your Bible. Where you, is it in capital letters or small letters? What does it show? It is the Lord himself who manifested. He came forth so that these people may have a difference. Look at, at, at the scripture where Saul and the Lord. You see what has, what has been written. Look at the scripture where, 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 where Hagar, I need Hagar, Hagar encountered with the angel of the Lord. During, at that moment when she had been chased away, Wakisema uh, 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 the, the, the son, Ishmael, will not be a partaker of the blessings of the Lord. It is the angel of the Lord. The Lord manifested himself. And I pray that this day, God is going to manifest upon your, upon your life. Himself. Because the things that are happening, there are things that angels, ordinary angels can do, but there are things that God will want to deal with the issue and deal with you himself so that he may, he, you may have a total turnaround of your life. There are things that you just need God himself to come. And I pray, may you have an encounter in the name of Jesus Christ. The angel of the Lord came upon or appeared to the woman and said to her, Indeed now you are barren. And you are born no children. But you shall conceive and bear a son. Listen to this. The man had for so long longed to have a son, a child. But it was nowhere to be seen. Hakuna mtoto. When the angel of the Lord manifested, the barrenness disappeared in the life of this lady. She was no longer called barren. Because she conceived and bore a child. Hello? The moment you have the divine visitation in your life, the barrenness in your life will disappear. You might think, I have pastor, I have children. Okay, it's okay. But you are barren for But you are barren in your life. Things are not working. You are just there. Ah, ah, yeah. The barrenness will disappear because the encounter of the power of God in your life will break every sort of barrenness in Jesus' name. Amen. Every kind of barrenness will disappear. Every struggle that you are experiencing, ukisama kwamba you are hustling, struggling, striving, sweating to receive. And even when you receive, you are not enjoying what you are receiving. That will disappear because God will lead you into a place of rest the moment you encounter with his presence. Amen. Hallelujah. So when God decides to visit a person, he can visit a person directly or indirectly. We can we'll be able to see how he, he, he does that. God also visits a person direct, indirectly. God, uh, when he does so indirectly, it is by sending his servants to a person or by sending angels to the person. I have told you the two types of messages, the, the, the statements, the angel of the Lord and the angel of the Lord or the angel of Yahweh. You see, the difference is that he can come himself or he can send somebody. The story of Balaam and Balak. When Balaam was going, he was being commanded not to go and he was not obedient. The Bible says that the angel of the Lord manifested upon this man with a sword. 
We shall see those examples as we continue. Let me tell you. You, you, you need a divine visitation. You need a divine visitation. In your life, you need a divine visitation. And you shall have the divine visitation. You shall have the encounter. Hello? You will have an encounter. Through dreams. Through vision. Live life. Amu nafikiria hili kuwe nafanyika wakati wa enzizire. There was a day I was praying in pain. And I told God this time round, come for yourself. Come for yourself. Sitaki unitumia mtu, sitaki unireten enu la unabi. Come for yourself. And that day when I was, I was, I was walking, I heard a voice. Go to your YouTube channel, get this person, listen to his message. God, I said I don't want to hear anybody. I want you. And yet I was hearing his voice and I had forgotten that he's the one speaking to me. <laughs> I went and I did exactly what I did. Let me tell you. Hey. What's it? What's it? Hey. Hey. So there are several accounts in the Bible where God did visit his people. These are the pattern of divine visitation. And whatever happened before, we can believe God for it to happen for us. Let's see some of these accounts that happen in the Bible. As you allow the Spirit of God to ignite your faith in your heart. That his word will be fulfilled in your life. In the areas, or in those areas where you need his visitation. Because I believe there is an area in your life where you need God's visitation. There is an area where I need him. So when you say, Akuna Mahalu, Itanji Mungu, there is a place you need God. Let him visit you in a unique way. And your visitation, listen to me, your visitation is not going to be the same as my visitation. It is totally different. You are going to have a different visitation. Hallelujah. So when this happens, number one, if you are writing, when visitation happens, there is a removal of barrenness in relation to fulfilled promise. Imagine if barrenness is broken. And this we see in Genesis chapter number 21, verse 1. If you, if, when you read it, I'm not going to read because of time. It's a story of Isaac, uh, Sarah. A visitation of God broke the long season of barrenness in Sarah's life, resulting in fulfillment of his promise and the birth of Isaac. There was a manifestation that took place in the life of Abraham. The Bible says that Abraham, when he was seated there, he saw men coming. He did not see angels. There were men, you people like you and me that were walking, but there were angels in real sense. The Bible says that do not forsake to entertain strangers, for in so doing you have welcomed angels without knowing. When you visit, you, 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 people visit you, when people you encounter with the people, some of them are angels. Listen to me, who are angels? Angels are ministering spirits. They are ministering spirits that take a form of, they can use even your, uh, they use even people's bodies. So, and then this person comes. But in real sense, this is not a real person. It is an angel of the Lord that has come upon you to have you, 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 to, to visit you. A visitation of the angel of God. So, men came to Abraham when he perceived in the spirit. He understood that these are not real men. They are angels sent by God. And he welcomed them and he, he, he ordered the wife to Go and prepare. In fact, we end up back at Lota. A good, a good. A, hey, that little mulo di andariwa pare irikwa ni mulo. Sema mulo. Because of strangers. Because of strangers, and they were not strangers, but they were angels of God. The angels were there. They came, and after welcoming them, what did they leave? The message was by this time tomorrow, next year. Sorry. By this time, next year, you shall have a child in this house. Remember, it was a prophecy that was given. A promise that out of the loins of Abraham shall proceed for the nations. Now, there is a fulfillment of that prophecy under the intervention of the visitation of the angel of the Lord. Angel of the Lord. They came. They left the message. And even Sarah wondered, at my age, can it happen? Let me tell you something. Kuna vitu ambavyo kwa mawazo yako unona aziwezekani. Lakini wakati unakumbana na malaika wapuana. 
mambo yote ambayo ulifikiri haiwezekani inabadilika na inawezekana katika jina la Yesu. Unajua kwamba saa hii uko mahali hapa. Maisha yako yanazungukia hapa. Kitu kwa muda mchache utajipata hata mahali penye unaishi unahamu unaenda kwa nyumba ya kifahari. Nyumba ya kifahari David, you can imagine for now you are there but the next moment God tells you there is a house in Lavington that you need to live in. Lavington. Na unaipata si unaenda kufurnish si empty house. Sema si empty house. Fully furnished. We ni kwenda tu na nguo zako peke yake. Eh kama ni mimi ile yangu yote vitu zote ninatafuta mtu mwenye ana kitu na mwambia come and inherit everything. And if possible I support that person in that house. Several months nikilipa ili as stabilize. Si mimi nimepata. Sasa and it shall be so in the name of Jesus. Divine visitation. Abraham encountered with the, the angels of the Lord. There was a visitation. Number two. Removal of afflictions in response to the cry of his people. Removal of afflictions in response to the cry of his people. And I believe there are so many moments that we have cried unto the Lord that he may remove every pain that you are going through. That whatever that is eating you up, I will do it. Biblia inatuambia kwamba wakati kuna kuwa na divine visitation there are removal of afflictions in response to the cry that we've been having ile kilio umekuwa nayo Bwana anaondoa anaondoa tunaona mfano katika Exodus chapter number 4 verse 31 about a visitation that God manifested a visitation of God broke the long season of Israel's bondage in Egypt walika Egypt kwa muda mrefu they cried unto God and God manifested upon their lives by sending forth a man a man he had prepared in the desert, in the wilderness for quite some time called Moses. Moses went and he was used of God to bring forth the message of deliverance. The affliction that the Egyptians, the, the, the Israelites were going through in the land of Egypt, it was broken forever. They no longer operated in that place because God visited them. There was a divine visitation. They realized God had not left them alone in their suffering but was intimately concerned for them. So when they cried unto him, he came down and delivered them by the workings of his power. You understand now this is kind of indirect, indirect visitation. Because he used a man. He did not even use an angel. He used a man. But before that, before that, there was an angel that came to a man. That is Moses. Through the burning bush, Am I helping somebody here? So no matter how great and how long the affliction we have suffered in the hands of the enemy, we can experience deliverance through the visitation of his power. And I pray today, let there be a divine visitation of the power of God upon your life in the name of Jesus. Divine visitation of the power of God upon this church in the name of Jesus. Upon our families in the name of Jesus. That whatever that we have longed for so long, let there be a, be a visitation that will break the cycles that we may experience the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living, in the name of Jesus. Number three, removal of famine and scarcity and provision in abundance. Removal of famine and scarcity. Removal of famine and scarcity and provision in abundance. Once famine and scarcity had been removed, there was provision for abundance. This was taking place in, uh, uh, on, on, uh, when you read the Bible, the book of Ruth, chapter number one. You understand there is a woman called uh, the story of Ruth, uh, 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 Naomi, uh, when they had gone to a, a foreign land or a, a, another place. God manifested in the land. There was a visitation of God that brought a long season of famine in Bethlehem, Judah. The testimony of God's goodness reached a grieving widow called Naomi. Akiwa kule mahali alikuwa wameenda na mumewe. Mahali ambapo walipata majanga kule. Biblia inatuambia kwamba wakati ambapo walirudi, walirudi wakapata God had visited the land and there was plenty in the land. What made them go? It was scarcity. So Naomi was living in Moab. She moved to the place, that place of visitation and her inheritance and the family line was restored there. Wakati alirudi. Alikuta watu walitemberewa. Sema kutemberewa. Si wale watu walikuwacha maisha ni mwaka wakaenda. Waruti wapata umetemberewa katika jina la Yesu. I'm saying, those people who left your life, let them come back and find that God has visited you in a greater way. 
that he has visited you, your life has changed. Your story changed. Your life, eh, 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 at, I pray that others, they find you driving your own car. Amen. Not a borrowed car, your own car. Amen. Do you think it's impossible? No. Ah, me, I believe everything is possible with my God. Amen. Today, I might be here preaching to you. I came by Uber. I can go back to my house with my own car. Or maybe, ha, ya, ya, ya. Hakuna kitu ekiwezekani kwa mungu. You know one of the things I'm praying, yule mtu ameshikilia gari yangu akosa amani kabisa aachilie. Airete. Airete kwa haraka kwa sababu baraka anapoendelea kushikilia ndio anajizuia baraka yeye. Mimi nataka abarikiwe. Ninataka abarikiwe na kubarikiwa kwake ni aachilie kwa haraka. Hata wewe kile Mungu amepanga katika maisha yako unafaa kupokea na kimezuiliwa. Kiachiwe ili yule mtu abarikiwe, we ubarikiwe wala ambao unafaa kuwa baraka kwao kupitia kile Barikiwe. Iwe ni season ya baraka, 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 baraka. Amen. Hello? Hello. Sama divine visitation. divine visitation. So the land was, God visited them and there was, there was plenty, food, there was food. And Naomi came back. God can visit us as individuals, as families, as nations to remove all lacks of, lacks and scarcity. Eh? Aneza kutambereya kama binafsi, kama familia. Kama jami, ama kama taifa, kama sahi, wacha niwambie. This nation of Kenya, spiritually, there is a divine visitation in our land. I tell you, I'm, I'm repeating, there is a divine visitation. Recently, tulikuwa na mkutano pale nyayo stadio. You remember? It was so powerful. Recently, tukakaa kidogo tumekuwa na ingine wiki hii meisha tu, pale nyayo bado, ya hoa. I was there. We were blessed. Hello? This week, we have had another meeting at university. We have done more. Hello? This week, we are having Rema Feast. Rema Feast. In fact, my own, my own mother, my own spiritual mother, will be among the people about what I call. It's not something small, Jameli. Ukisikia tumetemberewa, tumetemberewa. Sema kutemberewa. As a nation, God is doing something in this nation. He cannot send always to Madras those ministers to come all the way on our land and the land remain the same. I want you to know whoever that God has sent from uh, you know one of the things I was surprised this morning I was telling my wife the list is still growing. More great ministers are being added. Today I saw another one and said yeah, this one I have interacted with them. We have we are we, we are we are, we have been preached to by her several times. She's a an apostle, a mighty man of a, a, a mighty man, a, a mighty woman of God. Power packed. Ninamini hata wewe mwenyewe utapata nafasi ya kwenda kule. Eh? Make sure you watch through online. You'll be blessed. Can I tell you something? By the virtue that my mother is being a guest, there is a list of sons and how to call, me being connected. Our names were sent there. Our names is Ritungoko. Being given a VIP, VIP treatment. Mimi ni kona yotaka. Kuingia ni ta... Imagine, siya tukwanda kungangana na watu kule inje. Iyo hakuna. I told you. Yeah? Grace. Grace. Diri jangare ni kasema ni mimi. I looked at him kasema, my God. Gate number ile unatumia. Utumi gate zote. Special gate. Sit preserved. Hakuna mtu anaka hapo. Iyo grace si flow katika maisha inu katika jina la yesu. Na ita flow kwa sababu connection ina flow, ina flow from the top. Kama ma, 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 my mama mebarikiwa. Iyo grace ina flow. Ita flow. Wana yesu asifiwe. Sema divine visitation. Number four. Restoration through his power. Resulting in healings and miracles. Restoration through his power, resulting in healings and miracles. Acts chapter number 3. From verse 1, ukisoma, ukisoma utapata his story, a story of this man who was, who was a lame person katika beautiful gate. A beautiful gate, but there is a lame person. In other words, you've been incapacitated that you cannot enter uh, into good things. For so long, this man was there. Let me repeat number four. Restoration through his power 
resulting in healing and miracles. Acts chapter number 3. This person stayed there for so long. But there was an encounter that took place. So daily, they could take this man to be there. I ended up a bank person. Begging, but one day, say my one day, I can't hear you. I can't hear you. And that one day is today. That one day is today. They have seen you as incapacitated. You are not able. They have seen you that you are a candidate to suffer. They have seen you that you are a person that is worthy to be tormented and hakuribasheta. That day is today that there was an encounter through the men, the, the, the men that were anointed. Peter, when he went through that lane, he found this person. And he was saying, You know, nowadays they have merchandise that it's a, it's a big business where people are being imported from other countries who are lame. Special points of the streets to beg. But that time, this man was just put there because it was naturally lame. At the beautiful gate, one day Peter was passing there. And the power of God fell upon Peter. He looked at this person, and the words came out silver and gold. I do not have, but in the name of Jesus, rise up and walk. And the man stood up, started limping, started limping, eventually jumping, eventually started walking. The power of God broke the lameness in the life of this person. There was an encounter of the power with the power of God in his life. He encountered with Jehovah that transformed his life forever. I pray today, every lameness in your life, by the power of God, let it disappear in the name of Jesus. They shall no longer call you lame. They shall no longer call you poor. They shall no longer call you names. That that person, that woman, that he was not able to, you know, many, many other names, barrenness, sickly, whatever. Today is going to be the end of those names. A story is changing. They are going to call you blessed. They are going to connect with you. Let me tell you, some of them will come to your house with goodies. Because they want to make the, 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 to, to, to bring forth their good relationship. They want to bring reconciliation. Make a treaty with you that you shall not destroy me. They are destined for destruction because of the messes that they have done. But there are others because God wants to show something. They will come to make a treaty with you. Tulifanya hii. Nini, nini, nini. Na kwa sababu upoto wa mungu mezea ndani yako, utawachiria. Wakirudi kufanya hii wakitivi yao, watakuwa meendanga wakipotea. Sometimes to forgive is not easy. It is not easy. Considering the things that you have gone through, it's not easy. But by, because God has deposited uh, uh, his love in your heart, you have to. You forgive. It's only today that are ready to be forgiven. Can I hear a big amen? amen? So several miracle signs and wonders are possible if we can call on God for divine visitation. Healing of all manner of sicknesses, deliverances from all manner of oppressions and restoration of all losses. It takes place when we call unto him. And he visits us divinely. Number five. The ultimate divine visitation in executing the salvation plans. The ultimate divine visitation in executing the divine executing the, uh, the, the salvation plans. Luke chapter number one verse 68. Luke chapter number one verse 68. The Bible says, Blessed is the Lord God of Israel, for he has visited and redeemed his people. God himself visited his people and he redeemed them. Verse number 78, the Bible says, Through the tender mercy of our God, with which the day spring, with which the day spring, 
from on high has visited us to give light to those who sit in darkness and the shadow of death to guide our feet into the way of peace. So there is a way that God manifests in your life. In the New Testament, there was this man called Zacharias or Zachariah. He understood the ultimate visitation of God, of his people, was fulfilled in the birth of our Redeemer and Jesus Christ. That's why he is talking about this information. Verse 67 in answer, Kisema Kwamba. Now his father, Zacharias, was filled with the Holy Spirit and prophesied, saying, This was a prophecy that this man was releasing out of the uh, release of the Holy Spirit upon his life. And he said, Blessed, blessed is the Lord God of Israel. For he has visited and redeemed his people. The way he is going to visit you and redeem you from the oppression of men to liberate you and lead you into the place of rest. Every time there is a genuine conversation of soul, there is a divine visitation in action. Acts chapter number 9. Ukisoma palu tapata the story about his, his, the visitation and what happened to him. We can believe God for divine visitation for the salvation of the people. Wherever they are, if you've, been, you've had an encounter, then you can believe God also for another person. For a place. For a nation. Hallelujah. One is just a few. Allow me to finish with the number six because of time. Number six, the outpourings of the Holy Spirit in fulfillment of the word, of his word. Acts chapter number three. Verse number 19. Acts 3, 19. I'm repeating the outpouring, the outpourings of the Holy Spirit in fulfillment of his words. The Bible says that repent therefore and be converted that your sins may be blotted out so that the times of refreshing may come from the presence of the Lord. The time of refreshing may come. There is an outpouring of the Holy Spirit that you may have a refreshing from his presence from the day of Pentecost in Acts chapter number 2. And throughout the church history, we understand the visitation of the Holy Spirit that came outpouring and bringing refreshing and empowering to God's people. There was a lot of empowerment that took place refreshment that took place in the life of God's people. Every moment there was an outpouring. And I believe even today here that we are going to submit to the power of the Holy Spirit. There shall be an outpouring of his power unto your life that God will be able to visit you. That God will be able to change your story because whatever that you'll be yearning for, this is the day. Look at your neighbor, my neighbor. This is the day. Look at the other neighbor, my neighbor. This is your day. Every child of God needs this visitation in form of baptism of the Holy Spirit and in form of continual impartation of supernatural manifestations. Every person needs this. You cannot say that you don't need divine visitation. It should be your lifestyle. That you have an encounter with the power of God upon your life. You have an encounter with the angel of God. And let me tell you, when the angel of God and I could visit, the power of God will be upon you. The power of God will be upon you. The way I'm praying that this week, through these meetings, that there shall be an outpouring of the power of the Holy Spirit. That people will have an encounter with God. That men and women that shall be able to be, wherever you shall be, whatever you shall be doing. Do you know nowadays technology is so high? You can have even a headphone moja, unaweka hapa, you are listening to these sermons wherever you are. The proceedings that are happening, and you are still working. So you are not going to miss out anything. Sema, I will not miss out anything. By the way, that which God has prepared for you this week, you will get it. I repeat, you will get it. I repeat it. You will not miss out. Hello? Divine visitation. So that which you've been crying for. You've, you've called God for so many days. You've told him there was a day, day, day that uh, I stood and told God, I just need a turn around in my life. Total turn around. Total turn around. If you cannot come, God, then I'm done. Do you know even as you go through issues, you say, God, in this, no. Do something. Do something. 
And who is God? Who is God? Hey, hey. He creates testimonies. <laughs> so, he, hey, hey. Do you know God? Who said, I don't know God. You know, when God is on your side, anybody who fights you is fighting with God. If God is on your side, anybody who is fighting you, he is fighting God. Can they succeed? Let them there again. Let them there. We shall bury them. I repeat. Let them there. Wajaribu, utawazika. Kwanza wacha niwambie kitu. Niwambie kitu. Maubiri mefika hapo. You can end our, our sermon. Our sermon.